Hello, I'm Ollie. This is Criminolly, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today, uh, crime. It's Dead City by Shane Stevens, which is, I have to say, one of the most disturbing books I've ever read. So I read this a week or two after I filmed um, my segment for uh, one played by Visions is um, collaboration video on uh, the most disturbing books. So most disturbing books part seven, um, which has just gone up as I'm filming this, um, went up last night. I have to say, if I'd read this before I filmed that segment, this 100% would have been my choice. It is such a horrific book. It might not look it from the cover, it might look like a cheesy crime novel, but my God, is it impactful. I don't know how well known a name Shane Stevens is, so I've only read one other book by him, um, which is the one that's referenced on the cover here, By Reason of Insanity, which I read as a teenager, which is a, a really good serial killer novel, and I recently bought a new copy of that for myself, so I'm going to read that soon. Um, he wrote other, a few other kind of hard crime novels, I believe. Um, and this this is one I became aware of, A, because I'd read By Reason of Insanity, but also because Shane, uh, Shane Stephen, Stephen King references this book in The Dark Half. So there's a character in this book called Alexis Machine, who is a, um, he's a really mysterious character, and it's only towards the end of the book that he really, you really learn a bit more about him. Um, he's someone that other characters talk about in awe a lot as the book progresses. Um, but anyway, in The Dark Half, um, which you'll remember is a Stephen King book about a, a, a writer, a kind of serious writer, who has a, an alter ego um, or a pseudonym that he uses to write these kind of pulpy, uh, pulpy crime books. Um, in that book, Alexis Machine is a character in the pulpy crime books that the other guy writes. Um, but yeah, this one, you know, predates um, The Dark Half by quite a long time. So this was a Dark Half, I think, is late 80s. Um, or maybe even early 90s. This was written in 73. Um, yeah, so what's it about? <laughs> Stop babbling on it. Tell them what it's about. Right, so it's set in New Jersey and it's about mobsters, basically. And, and it, it kind of doesn't really have a plot. It's about, so there's two um, young guys. So and I'm going to have to look at the back to remember their names. Harry Strager and Charlie Flowers, who are they're not young exactly, but they are in, like low down the, the ladder of the mob. They're, they're kind of enforcers, run anything bigger than that. Um, and then there's a guy called Joe Zucco, I think I'm pronouncing that right, who's like, you know, one of the Dons. Um, and Alexis Machine is, is another Don, a kind of rival Don. Um, and the book really is about what they do. So particularly... Um, Harry Strager, Charlie Flowers and Joe Zuko. It's about the crimes they get involved in, you know, how they make money. Um, and particularly with the two guys who are lower down the, the, the totem pole, it's about their attempts to, you know, rise up the ladder um, and the things they do um, to, to, you know, to, to impress the dons and the bosses and, and rise up. What makes this such a horrific book is is some of the things that happen in it and more than that the attitude of the characters to those things and I, i'm not going to go into too much detail because i i really think this is a book that deserves to be read if you are a lover of disturbing fiction um so i'm not going to go into too much detail but really there are two scenes in particular um which just left me speechless and they come very close to each other in the book in fact so the first half of the book is kind of you know as I've said it's it's almost like an, an everyday story of mobsters in that you know they're they're organizing these these crimes they're swindling people they're you know they're loan sharking and things like that and there's, there's definitely violence in you know in, the, in that first half of the book there's you know people getting beaten up because they haven't you know paid their shiv and things like that um, Shiv, is Shiv the right word? Can't remember. No, Shiv's somebody you stab people with, isn't it? Vig. They have paid the Vig. Um, so yeah, all, all that kind of stuff happens. But then there's this scene where um, there, there's a character who's basically swindled Joe Zuko or betrayed Joe Zuko. And he sends a couple of his guys to, to get this guy. 
um, but they don't know where the guy is, so they go to his family. And, and what happens there is just mind-blowingly horrible. And it, it's, it works very cleverly. It's a, it's a bit like one of those, you know, the, the kind of scene you get in a horror movie or a suspense movie where the tension's building up and you know something's going to happen, um, like a character's walking down a dark hallway or something like that, and then a cat jumps out and you jump and then you go, oh, thank God, it was just a cat. And then the real scare happens. It's a bit like that in that something happens which you think is really horrible and then you realise actually it wasn't and then something really horrible happens. Um, and then shortly after that, there's another scene where um, it's it's like a body disposal scene, should we say? So so there's this uh, again, there's this character who the the mobsters need to get revenge on, and the the way they kill him and then dispose of his body, and and this this guy who comes in basically just for that scene, he's not in the rest of the book, whose speciality is effectively torture and and body disposal, and he's just such a utterly repellent, amoral, just a, a horrific character, um, but utterly convincing. Um, and that's, you know, that's really the thing about this book is it feels real. It feels so true. Um, it, it, it almost feels like a, a non-fiction book um, in that the characters really live on the page. You really feel like you get to know these guys, you get to know their motivations. Um, and I, I would never say that you root for them, but you can you kind of get some kind of understanding of the, of their the reason that they or the way they justify to themselves the things that they're doing. Um, so yeah, just an, an incredibly bleak and distressing book. And I would say as well that the end, the ending, um, and again, I'm not going to give it away, but the ending in particular is incredibly bleak and, and you know, a bit of a um, a bit of a gut punch to be honest with you um, and the the thing with the writing in the book is the prose is it's it's very matter of fact but it's also quite dense so you know this isn't a long book it's less than 300 pages or around 300 pages but it but it really packs so much in and and I found it was one of those books that I really had to pay attention to so if, if I if my attention wandered a bit um I would get confused and I would find that lots of things had happened and I, there were quite a few times where I, I did go back and reread sections um because I really was so invested in the story I needed to know every little detail um but yeah let me read you a bit of the prose which a shows you the kind of prose style that Shane Stevens uses um but also shows you it gives you a flavor of the kind of horrible shit that happens in this book when he was 30, he was grossly cheated by an associate in a business deal, and his reputation as a knowledgeable young racketeer was virtually destroyed. With a ferocity remarkable even for him, Zuko killed the man and cut off his head and limbs. Their dismembered body he sent to the man's family, and the limbs to enemies of his. Then he held a dinner for various people in the business, during which the head was baked and the skin removed. After everyone had eaten, the head was brought to Zuko at the table, in front of the astonished guests, he cut a hole in the temple, shook out the brains through the hole and proceeded to eat them. Everybody at the table got the message. Joe Zuko was not a man to be tampered with. That's the kind, that's the kind of shit that happens in this book. Um, yeah, it's it's horrible, but I, I would absolutely recommend it if you like that kind of thing. Um, I think it's out of print, which is terrible. Um, but if you can find a copy, do, because it's just a, an amazing, amazing book. As always, thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope you've I hope you found that useful and that I've opened your eyes to um, to Dead City as a, as a book you should read if you've never heard of it. Um, really appreciate you watching the channel. Really appreciate everyone's support. Um, do keep safe out there and I will speak to you again soon. Cheerio.